What is up you guys? So in this one we'll be talking about the KKT or Karush Khan Tucker optimality condition. We'll first start off with the KKT conditions for non-convex problems and then we'll write down the KKT conditions for convex optimization problems which will turn out to be not only necessary but also sufficient conditions for optimality. That is if you have points to test if they're primal or dual optimal you can just go ahead and say if they satisfy the kkt conditions then yes those points are primal and dual op and the kkt conditions you know are not only used for testing you can also use them to solve your optimization problem and this is shown in an example by the end of this lecture namely we give an example and we see how kkt conditions could actually give us a closed form solution to our problem so without further ado, right so given an optimization problem of the following form in the previous lectures we started talking about conditions for optimality we gave a very important condition that is the complementary slackness that holds true given strong duality in this lecture we're going to talk about kkt or karush con tucker conditions we're going to assume that the functions f and h are differentiable but we're going to start by stating the KKT conditions for general non-convex problems. So if we've got a non-convex optimization problem, and let's say that X star is the optimal point, and lambda and nu star are optimal for the dual problem. And we assume also that we have a zero duality gap. Now, since X star is the minimizer of the Lagrangian at the optimal dual, then it follows that the gradient of L should be zero at X star, right? So that said, this gradient is zero, right? So expanding the gradient in terms of the functions involved in the optimization problem, we get the following first order condition. Actually, we have several observations from here. And let's state them down. Well, since X star is optimal, then the inequality constraints should be negative. They're feasible, so they satisfy the inequality constraints of the optimization problem, right? So we must have that all fi X star, where i goes from 1 to m, all inequality constraints are satisfied simultaneously. And not just that, the equality constraints as well. So X star must satisfy the inequality and equality constraints, having it being feasible, right? And due to the dual construction of the problem, my Lagrangian multipliers should be non-negative, right? And there is one per inequality constraint. And due to complementary slackness, which is a result of strong duality or zero duality gap. So here I might as well say strong duality. So, so I must also have that my lambda i star fi x star r zero, right? And last but not least, as we can see here, the gradient vanishes at x star, right? And this is what we actually refer to as the KKT conditions. Now, for any optimization problem with, of course, differentiable objective and constraint functions that are the F's and the H's, so that we can write the gradient, right? Or else we cannot express the gradient. And for which strong duality holds because we need the fourth condition, that is this guy over here. We say that any pair of primal optimal point, that is x star and lambda and mu star, must satisfy the KKT conditions, the one that you see over here. Now for convex problems, that is when my cost and inequality constraint functions are convex and the equality constraint functions are affine, there's something more beautiful we can say. The KKT conditions turn out to be also sufficient conditions for optimality. That is, if I have a point to test, that is x bar for the primal 
lambda and nu bar for the dual if those points satisfy the kkt conditions as you see over here then we say that x bar is optimal for the primal so it's primal optimal and lambda bar and nu bar are dual optimal so kkt conditions actually give you primal and dual optimality with zero gap of course actually this comes from the fact that the first two constraints actually give you that x bar is primal feasible right now since lambda i bar is positive that means that your lagrangian is actually convex in x now the fourth condition actually tells you that you've got complementary slackness and the last one tells you that x bar is a minimizer for the lagrangian function that is convex from this you can actually write down the dual function that is this guy over here and since we're evaluating at x bar then thanks to complementary slackness this guy is zero and we know that since x bar is feasible then hi of x bar is also zero so we get that the dual is actually f zero of x bar which tells you that you've got zero duality gap which means that x bar is primal optimal and lambda bar and nu bar are dual optimal so in short we can say that for any convex optimization problem with differentiable objective and constraint functions that is all the functions included all the associated functions have to be differentiable any point that satisfies the KKT conditions, so forget about strong duality, forget about complementary slackness, we can summarize all optimality conditions in the KKT condition, which actually includes complementary slackness and feasibility and zero gradient, that is, they're all packed up into the so-called KKT conditions, then this point is optimal. In other words, X bar is primal optimal, lambda bar nu bar are dual optimal and we've got zero duality gap now you can start seeing how important kkt conditions are first they provide sufficient and necessary conditions for optimality right and thus by nature many algorithms for convex optimization are aim at solving or optimizing the kkt conditions so as an example, imagine we've got the following equality constrained convex quadratic minimization problem. That is, the cost function is quadratic, the equality constraints are affine, and the central matrix in the quadratic term is positive semi-definite. So if we take a look at the KKT conditions, we see that we don't have inequality constraints, right? So the first condition doesn't provide any piece of information, right? However, for the second condition, we can see that we have to satisfy the equality constraints. Hi of x bar is equal to zero. So this gives us that if x star is optimal, that means that a x star equal to b. Now again, since we do not have inequality constraints, that is m is zero, right? So I don't have this, nor do I have this, right? And last but not least, writing down the gradient of the cost function, right? We've got Px plus Q. So Px plus Q evaluated at the optimal point. Now the second term here, we don't have it since M is zero. We don't have any inequality constraints again. So this guy doesn't exist. And over here, the gradient of the affine part is simply a transpose so we get an a transpose new evaluated at the optimal dual so new star is zero so there you go the kkt conditions for this equality constraint quadratic minimization problem is simply those two conditions now you can if you want to be more compact you can pack up these two conditions into one matrix form equation in terms of your x star and new star right so if you want to start by this guy over here q goes on the other side you isolate q from x star and u star and you see the coefficient of x star is actually p the coefficient of 
mu star is A transpose, and those are equal to minus Q, right? And the first constraint is actually A, and we don't have any multiplier for nu star, which is equal to B, right? So actually this matrix equation summarizes all the KKT conditions for the problem. So what does that mean? What does that actually mean? It means that there you go. You have the solution to your problem. Well, what is it? It's the solution for this linear system. That is, if this guy is invertible, then you can obtain the optimal primal and dual using this simple inversion formula. Of course, again, given that this block matrix is invertible, right? So that's it for this lecture. We talked about very important optimality conditions that are the KKT for general non-convex problems and for convex optimization problems. Well, it turns out that the KKT is not only necessary, but also a sufficient condition for optimality for convex optimization problems with differentiable cost, inequality, and equality constraint functions. We also gave an example on the KKT condition, how we, you could apply it using the following quadratic minimization convex optimization problem. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this lecture beneficial. If you did, please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and if you have any questions whatsoever, kindly leave a comment down in the comment section below, and I'll make sure I'll get to it as soon as possible. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in future lectures.